view of the status of the physics derivation graph. So currently, I'm in the uh, version 7 Fickle web interface, and I'm going to run Docker Compose, and it's going to build the images. So it currently relies on Flask and Redis and Nginx and GUnicorn. So that build process um, has some log entries here. So here's the Redis, which is actually not currently in use. I'm actually using a JSON file. Um, so the Redis is in there is sort of like a exploration. The Flask interface starts up and is connected to the database. All right, so we'll now open up a browser and we'll go to localhost. So this is being served by Nginx, and I'm gonna click on editor there to see if we can get a website up. And it does come up, um, and can do a bunch of different things. So let's look at the symbols and operators first. Those are maybe the least interesting. So we've got symbols and operators, and those are not HTML tables yet. But the expressions, those are in an HTML table. Um, so I can sort, these tables are sortable, not that that matters too much because sorting is not relevant. And we've also got the which derivation each uh, expression is used in. So that's for all of those. And then at the very bottom of this page, um, I could delete any of the expressions and I can edit the expressions um, there. So I can update that. Right, yeah, so then at the bottom of every page, we've got a how long it took to render, and then uh, some links and licensing. So I'll go back to the editor here. You can list all the inference rules. So the inference rules um, are also in an HTML table, and they're, uh, they include what uh, derivation each inference rule is used in. So declare initial expression is the most popular, and that shows up on top here. And then things that are not used are at the bottom. Okay, so there's 71 inference rules. It's uh, dynamically generated. Let's go back to the editor one more time. All right, I can view the derivations. So let's, there's a list of all the derivations here. So I'm going to display the graph viz for that. Uh, Compton's equation for scattering. Um, I got back a warning that SymPy is complaining about an expression that I passed in. But other than that, um, I got a page back, so I'm happy have a D3JS graph here, or if I mouse over one of the nodes, um, I can uh, highlight what it's connected to. So that's um, a nice feature. And then I can also um, I, uh, zoom in and out of that derivation. So I can sort of zoom in on pieces and I can move it around and I can change where the node is, sort of a, a four-structed graph there. So those are all pretty nice features. It's not maybe the most visually easy to navigate, although it's sort of fun to play with. Um, you can sort of see um, it's missing the the directionality on the edge on the edges, so I don't have arrows there yet. It would make it a little bit more readable, but there's still some issues with sort of like uh, node overlap and, and visibility of nodes. But that's there, and it's sort of fun to play with initially. Probably the more useful Visualization is a static PNG from GraphViz of the same graph. Um, so you can sort of see there I have the node coloring and the node shapes, the distinguished node types. So here's this, a feed and an inference rule going to an expression. So that's the, the PNG. And then that derivation is all laid out in a table here. And again, it's sortable. And uh, we have some uh, input LaTeX uh, and output LaTeX in each of those expressions is linked. So if I click on this input LaTeX, it takes me back to the, the entry in the list of all expressions, and I can see there that it's only used in one derivation. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so feeds are also linked.
And then I have a list of all the expressions here sort of sorted. All right, so I'll go back to the editor. Um, and let's look at another derivation. So maybe uh, Maxwell's and electric field wave equation, and we can generate a PDF for that. So the PDF is hyperlinked with all the expressions, so I can sort of jump around and say uh, 9 is linked here, and let's see if I can. That's not too easy to see, but these are all hyperlinked, and so you can navigate around this PDF with hyperlinked expressions. Uh, and that was dynamically generated in the background. And if we were to look at the graph is version of that, we'd see something pretty similar to the Compton's that we were looking at earlier. So that's the a different derivation. Okay, now this one, um, I don't know why that one was not, but I'm getting step validity. So here I can see like which steps were validated and which um, SimPy weren't, wasn't able to parse. Oh yeah, probably because there was an error. That's right. Now let's go back to the editor and find a simple one. Let's look at uh, frequency. Frequency, yes, frequency relations. Let's look at the graph is for that. It's not going to parse it up. That's unfortunate. So it, the reason there wasn't a step validity entry is because there was a SymPy error. So I'm not sure if I have any other simple expressions that should parse out wrong. Um, probably not. OK. Uh, let's try quadratic equation. So we got an error there, so we're not going to get any validation. So lastly, let's look at the um, entering expressions. So let's start a new derivation. And we'll start with declaring an initial expression. Right. So I'm going to put in uh, a equals p. So right now, this has no derivation steps, so that table is empty, but it's giving us a list of all the available expressions. All right, I'm going to 